97.3 City FM, Relevant Radio, always. Today is historic because here in Navrongo, we are setting in place, in motion, the first initiative of what will eventually become a major source of future energy supply in our country, Ghana. Mr. Chairman, this solar plant we are commissioning here today is the beginning of a new era in Ghana's energy exploration. Come it marks the first feeding of renewable energy into our national transmission grid. It is a two megawatt plant, but as a pilot, it has opened the gateway for us to feed in hundreds more megawatts of renewable energy into the grid. As our economy continues to grow at a rapid pace, the demand for power also increases at an even faster pace. It is estimated that we must put in place at least 200 megawatts of generation every year if we are to keep ahead of the demand for electricity in this country. I have committed myself to increase Ghana's installed generation capacity to 5,000 megawatts by the year 2015. And I know that with the human resource we have in our power utility companies, the VRA, the Great Coast, Netco, the ECG and others will be able to achieve this uh, vision. To achieve this goal, of expanded generation and universal access to energy under our Energy for All program, there are certain issues we need to consider. One, we need increased private sector investment in electricity generation and distribution. As you are aware, government alone cannot raise the capital investment needed to provide the energy that this country requires. And so we need to attract the private sector to assist in putting in more generation into the system. Secondly, we need to work on reducing the percentage of unaccounted for power in the system. This, results as a, uh, this comes about as a result of various factors. One, there's a natural loss of power when you transport electricity over distance. That is natural and we can't do anything about it. Even then, we can do something about it. As we improve the technology for carrying electricity, we can reduce the amount of electricity that we lose from transporting it. But certainly, the most account unaccounted for power is electricity theft. That is those of us who steal power. Uh, we call it illegal connection. That accounts for a huge percentage of the power that we lose uh, as a result of theft. And so that is one area that we need to look at. Because for those who steal the power and consume it free of charge, they make the cost of power more expensive for the rest of us who pay for our power. And so it's your duty if you're paying for power, if you find somebody who is stealing power, it's your duty to report that person because that person is making electricity more expensive for you. Because in calculating the cost of power, it is calculated over the total cost of power that is generated. And if somebody is stealing it free, then it means that your tariff goes up because somebody is consuming it free of charge. The next issue is conservation of electricity. As the economy grows and people's incomes improve, we have a demand for more electronic appliances. And so if you go to everybody's room today, you'll find a TV set, you'll find a refrigerator, you'll find a hot water kettle. In some cases, you'll find microwave ovens. These are all equipment that consume power if you don't use them reasonably. And so in order that your bills and your tariffs will be low, you have to learn how to conserve power. If you are going out of your room and you don't need the light on, please switch it off. If you leave the light on, it will continue to run the meter. And if the meter runs, what happens? 
you have to pay for the power consumed. If you are going to make tea, boil it in bulk, and all of you drink your tea at once. Don't boil yours and leave. Then your wife will wake up and boil hers and leave. Then the children will wake up, each of them, boil the same water, make their tea and leave. The continuous and frequent use of the kettle consumes power. But if you all sit together, it's nice, as a family, you boil one kettle of tea, one kettle of water, and then you pour it and you all drink tea. After that, everybody disperses his way. You consume less electricity. And so these are many things that you can do. Don't leave your electric fan on if there's nobody in the living room. Don't leave the air conditioner on if there's nobody to be able in the to living room power for themselves. So far, we have distributed more than 10,000 solar lamps. And we're in the process of distributing more solar lamps. When we have distributed enough solar lamps, it is our intention to stop the use of kerosene as a source of lighting. In the 21st century, to continue to use fossil fuel like kerosene, processed fuel like kerosene for lighting is unacceptable. Solar solutions are available, and as you were told by the chief executive of VRA, they are becoming cheaper. Solar lanterns are much, much cheaper than they were in the past. And so government is going to continue to distribute these lanterns so that we don't need to use kerosene anymore for lighting. In any case, those who need the kerosene don't get it. Because what people do is they buy the kerosene and they mix it with diesel and just make a huge profit for themselves. And that is because government is very greatly subsidizing the price of kerosene. And so our intention in the future is to provide solar-powered uh, lanterns to communities that are off-grid and reduce or completely stop the use of kerosene as a source of lighting. And when we have done this, we'll increase the price of kerosene to be at par with that of diesel so that it creates no incentive for people to mix kerosene into diesel. In any case, with that practice, they are spoiling the engines of a lot of vehicles by mixing kerosene in the diesel, adulterating the fuel. And so that's an issue that government will soon address. Ladies and gentlemen, I am mindful that we have ambitious targets to meet. But considering the progress that we have made so far, and considering the human resource that we have in this country, I am convinced that these targets are achievable. If we put our minds to it, I believe in our abilities and capabilities to achieve these and many more. Indeed, early analysis of trends in the sector show that we have added almost 265 megawatts of generating capacity in the recent year. Ladies and gentlemen, while ensuring the development of conventional energy resources, it is also our resolve to increase renewable energy sources, as was told to you by the CEO of VRA. Much work is already being done in this regard, and this makes me confident that we will achieve our target of 10% uh, renewable energy in our energy mix by the year 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, the Navrongo plant, as I said, is the first in Ghana that we are integrating into the national grid. It is said to have a capacity of 2 megawatts, which will be increased to 2.5 megawatts by the end of next month, or the next two months. While this is a modest capacity, it is undoubtedly a pace setter and the forerunner of opportunities that are waiting to be harnessed. Today, therefore, marks the beginning of an era of limitless possibilities in the energy sector. I am informed that even at the current two megawatts of this solar plant, it is enough to feed the whole of the Navrongo district with power. Mr. Chairman, following directives from the Presidency to the Ministry of Energy and Petroleum, I expect that expedited action will be taking on ongoing efforts to develop the other renewable energy resources, including wind, biomass, and waste to energy. So far, nine provisional licenses have been issued to private uh, investors by the Energy Commission to begin exploration for energy from some of these sources. 
As you were told, the Volta River Authority is also progressively developing an additional 10 megawatts solar plant in the Upper West region with support from the KFW of Germany. 50 megawatts hydropower plant at Kualugu is also on the drawing board. Currently, expressions of interest are being appraised. Also, in the first phase, as you were told by the executive executive, 150 megawatts of wind power is being planned. I take this opportunity to remind the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission and the relevant sector agencies to expedite action to finalize and publish the renewable energy feed-in tariff to enable the private sector investors take full advantage of the provisions in the renewable Lower the airport.